So we are going to watch today a film called Everything is a Remix. Now, um, this is the second iteration of this film. I think the first iteration came out maybe 2015. It was a four-part series. It was a little bit different. Um, you know, where he, where Kirby went actually a little bit more into like uh, people like Steve Jobs and, you know, how, you know, Apple basically stole all of its ideas from other companies and then like... We have, you know, always uh, been shameless about stealing great ideas. Ironically, 20, 30 years later, they're suing everybody in the smartphone in industry, you know, and, Bill, Bill, you know, Steve Jobs is like, I'm going thermonuclear on people, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he goes into, like, you know, uh, movie making, Star Wars, and, and all these things um, that he, he really skips on the newer version. So you could actually find that four-part series if you're really into it. But we're going to watch a film today called Everything is a Remix. And... Um, I really like he's updated it and he's brought in things like AI intelligence, you know, AI art, you know, which I think is really fascinating, um, you know, specifically when it comes to owning it, right? Um, as you'll find, uh, you can't, you know, uh, copyright AI art um, because there's no human author, there's no author. Um, it's kind of a fascinating thing and the courts have, have ruled like, you, you know, I couldn't have AI art generated and then me co copyright that because there's no, I guess, no human author or, or whatever, right? Um, although most works are authored by corporations and they're not humans, you know, but they have the same rights as humans. So maybe AI will get there at some point. Anyways, so this film is going to kind of like look at how basically everything in our world, despite being credited to individual geniuses, right, like you, and individual artists and great creators are the byproduct of, you know, these networks of, of people that innovate and create new things. And, you know, um, that basically we're constantly inspired and all the great you know, inventors and thinkers and artists of our time have been inspired or have borrowed directly or, you know, borrowed indirectly, um, you know, from other artists. But we call Edison the great inventor, you know, but Edison didn't invent shit. You know, we, you know, we talk about Jimmy Page as this great, you know, musician, but he, he ripped off, you know, tons of stuff, you know, and which is whatever, you know, but I mean, you know, so he gets into all that stuff. So just kind of watch this and think, is this bullshit? <laughs> like, is his idea here bullshit? Like, is what Kirby's saying crap? You know, like, no, like, there are individual great inventors and ideas are, you know, individually amazing and awesome. Or is he right spot on, you know, or maybe you've never thought about it. Like how many of y'all have like gone and sat on a park bench and like thought about the, the, the nature of ideas, you know, like the, the, the who's done that? Nobody. Maybe you have little Z man. Uh, anyways. Um, so just think about that as you watch it now. Pay attention when you watch the AI stuff, um, specifically to diffusion, you know, um, and making models, because that's the one part where copyright infringement could possibly happen. So just sort of pay, pay attention to, to that, that whole part, um, because there, there may be like a quiz question on it, just, you know, maybe. Um, at some point, although there is no quiz for the first day, anything from everything is a remix, we push to the, to the next day. But he says other things too in this, like, we're all memes. Like, y'all are memes. The way you dress, the way you dance, the way you talk, you know, just, you are a meme. And that's kind of like a fascinating and also sad fucking way to think about <laughs> ourselves as memes. Um, but he's kind of like spot on with that in, in some way. So. I think the cool thing about memes, though, is that memes are free. You know what I mean? Like, whoever created the Crying Jordan meme isn't suing other people for using it. You, you, you know what I mean? And adapting it. Like, great memes spread, right? And no one's worried about who created them. And I think ideas, and he makes this point, and I think ideas are really like memes as well. And I think that's one thing to really, like, sort of hone in here is, like, you know, our idea, you know, are we memes and our ideas memes? Now, when we started today, um, 
you know, I didn't read these quotes, but I'll read them now. You know, uh, originality is the art of concealing your sources. That's from Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin, inventor, framed, you know, helped to, you know, write the Constitution. Also owned the largest, you know, uh, printing press uh, companies in the United States and pirated, you know, works of authorship from European authors and uh, made lots and lots of money off of that. You know, he was a capitalist, you know what I mean? Um, anyways, you know. But it, originality is the art of concealing your sources. Damn, that's pretty subversive. But uh, I, I hate Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> uh, who likes Thomas Jefferson, right? But I, I don't like him. But I love this quote. No one possesses the less because everyone possesses the whole of it. He who receives an idea from me receives it without lessening me. As he who lights his candle at mine receives light without darkening mine. Think about that. He's making an analogy or metaphor, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, um, about ideas, right? And what's he saying this? Let's do a little exercise here. I have a candle. <laughs> I'm going to light it, right? takes a few extra minutes here. All right, I have a candle. Now, this candle, this fire, is an idea. A great idea, right? And what Jefferson is saying here is is this. Um, let's just do something. Let's pretend, you know, we all have a candle, but just me has fire on mine, right? I have fire and light. I have warmth. I can see, right? This is a great idea. Now, you don't have light. You are not hashtag lit, right? I'm the only hashtag lit up in here. Right. But I decide I'm going to be nice and I'm going to give you some fire. And I'm going to light your candle. Now, the thing to think about here is this. Look at these candles. There's mine. There's yours. What's happened to my great idea, my fire, my light? Right. Nothing. It's still there. So that's what Jefferson's saying about a great idea. When it inspires other ideas and it gives fire and light to other people, it doesn't actually take away from the original, right? It, it actually, a lot of people would argue, it adds to the original because now we all, we all have fire and light, right? Because I can light mad people's candles with my candle, with my fire, and it doesn't dim my flame. You know what I'm saying? And that's the sort of nature of, of you know, inspiration and, and ideas that, 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 that Jefferson talks about. And Kirby does, too, in a way of framing as memes, right? Like, it's the saying, a great meme is not lessened by other people using it and appropriating it. Just like taking someone's great idea, which may be multiple great ideas put together, and using them for something, right, is not going to, like, take away from, from the original. Like, it's not going to at all, right? So um, that's the whole point is we can all be lit if we, you know, sort of embrace this whole sharing thing, right? But the way that the copyright and basically any ideas work now as they're protected by laws that turn them into property um, is this, is that basically, um, you know, you want, you want my fire, right? Like you want my fire, you want my fire, right? I have fire, right? I have fire, I had fire until I blew that sucker out, right? I have fire, right? Now we all know that if I give you, give to you for no charge, I give you light from my fire, right? We, we all know it won't weaken my fire or weaken its value, right? But here's the thing, we have to now do something else. We gotta make money off of it, right? So we make it artificially scarce. Now I could light everybody's candle with this, but then it won't have any value in the market economy. So what I have to do is, oh, you want fire? One dollar. And I charge you a dollar to have access to my fire. And then now you have fire. Now, if you can afford that dollar, now some of y'all may not have a dollar to spend on fire. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So the set that's an element of artificial scarcity, right? Like Fire and light, just like great ideas, are not actually artificially scarce. But what we do is we basically protect them by law and then monetize them. And then whoever can pay can have access, right? And it's just kind of like y'all, I bring up this point all the time, y'all are in college, right? 
you all know all the information, everything you're going to get from this class, you can find on the internet. You can find these ideas out there for free. They exist in the world for you to consume, right? Knowledge and information is out there, but the university makes it artificially scarce by charging you a fee. Tuition to learn stuff, right? And that's kind of like how, how the world works, obviously. Um, but this is kind of the analogy that, that Jefferson's making with great ideas is that the original is not lessened when people take, take, take from it. In fact, it's, you know, increased because now we're all inspired and we're all lit up. We all got, we can all see, we all got some heat. It is getting cold out here. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, watch this movie. Everything is remixed. Think about it in your own world. And um, we'll talk a little bit about it in module number two. Um, and we'll roll from there. All right, y'all take care. Zilla is sleeping over here. I've done talked him to sleep. All right, y'all. Peace.